Well, it's hard to believe, but it's been four months since we did our last U.S. Senate map prediction, so we're going to do it again. Go well, it's hard to believe, but it's been four months since we did our last U.S. Senate map prediction, so we're going to do it again, going through state by state and predicting the final result. How's it going to shake out who will control the Senate after the November 5th, 2024 elections? Let's find out. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. Okay, this is actually my second time recording this video because my camera died the first time, so we're going to try to avoid that happening again. Uh, so let's get into it. A couple notes. I do have Trump currently winning the presidential election, as I broke down in my last uh, presidential election video a couple weeks ago, so that will affect some of these races, and so just wanted to let you know as far as that goes, and we'll mention that later. Also, our ranking system for the purposes of this video will be tilt 0.1 to 1.9%. Lean, 2% to 4.9%. Likely will be 5 to 9.9%, so kind of a wider spread there. Safe will be anything 10% and above, so double digits. So let's start up in the northeast, work our way down. Uh, we'll start with our safe seats. I'm going to collapse that real quick. We have Maine and Vermont, though they're technically independents. Angus King and Bernie Sanders are both basically Democrats. They're going to win. Democrats will win. Whoops. Democrats will win in Massachusetts, in Rhode Island, in Connecticut, in New York and New Jersey and Delaware and Republicans have safe seats in West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi, Hawaii, safe dim. Texas, yes, I don't think Ted Cruz is going to come anywhere close to winning. I'm going to put Texas as safe or anywhere close to losing. I'm going to put Texas as safe. Uh, Missouri, safe. Nebraska, safe. Both seats. North Dakota, safe. Wyoming, safe. Utah, safe for Republicans, Democrats, safe in Washington and California. So just like that, we're trimmed down to 10 U.S. Senate seats. Uh, we'll start with a couple of these first, a couple likelies, and that is going to be uh, Minnesota. I do believe it's going to go to Amy Klobuchar. I don't have any polling pulled up for this, but I don't think it's quite going to be safe, but I think she's going to perform quite well regardless of how well, of how well Trump does in the state. I think uh, she's pretty popular for some reason. Um, the Wicked Witch of the Midwest, as I like to call her, um, I decided just now. And uh, I think she's going to win re-election pretty easily. Now, one of the other races that I want to look at here, uh, Virginia, I'm not pulling up any polling for this, uh, but Virginia, for some reason, Hong Tao, or as you may have heard him called, Hong Cao, and I'm sorry, I keep scratching my arm here, I have bee stings all over it, so you know. I'll try not to be doing that for the, for the whole video, but anyway, so Hong Tao is his name, basically. I'm not pronouncing that exactly correctly, but it's closer than Hong Kao, but that's what you hear him called. But anyway, he's been uh, proclaimed as the Republican nominee for U.S. Senate in Virginia. At least where I'm in Virginia, I don't see that happening. Uh, he does not have any of the momentum. He's not well-liked around here. Granted, he's apparently well-liked uh, up in the higher, higher populated area of Nova, so maybe he does end up getting the win. We'll see. But for now, um, I still think Jonathan E. Moore can pull out the nomination, who is my preferred candidate, a real conservative constitutional lawyer. I've had him on the show before. So uh, Virginia, unfortunately, regardless of who wins the nomination, is going to be a likely state. So 5 to 9.9% for Democrats. Tim Kaine, uh, we could see it. If it was under 5%, it would be a very impressive showing for the Republican nominee, but I don't think it's going to be under 5%. I think Tim Kaine is going to win by around 7 to 9%, and so we're putting it in a likely Democrat scenario here, regardless of how well Trump does in the state. 7 to 9% prediction. Tim Kaine wins re-election, the former VP pick of Hillary Clinton. Now, Maryland, let's look at some polling here, and I forgot to mention, uh, this video, we are going to look at polling for some of it to kind of get away of an idea of how these races are going, but this is largely my opinion, so if you're looking for some sort of in-depth uh, data analysis, check out you know, like Election Predictions Official EP makes great videos breaking down a lot of in-depth data. This is much simpler. It's just simply my opinion, uh, opinion which happens to be 100% correct. Okay, moving on. Maryland, uh, Larry Hogan versus, I believe her name is Angela also Brooks. He currently leads by 6.5 points, but the only recent poll we have is from The Hill. Shows also Brooks up 10. I don't see this race going to Republicans. I had some slight hope for a little while that maybe Hogan could win this race, uh, but you know he's not like it's not like he's a conservative. I don't 
he's pretty much a rhino, very establishment, but he'd be, you know, at least an occasional Republican vote, so like a bonus vote almost. Be nice to have in the Senate from a blue state, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's either going to get absolutely crushed or he'll keep it really surprisingly close, overperforming Trump a lot. I don't think he'll overperform Trump enough to win. We're going to put Maryland as likely Democrat, as much as I'd like to say there's a chance it goes uh, goes to uh, Republicans. I doubt it. So, uh, yeah, I, as much as I'd like to say that... Um, it's going to go to Larry Hogan. I don't believe that's going to be the case. Okay, uh, moving on here. Uh, I noticed I put Ohio as a safe red. I apologize for that. We'll get that fixed. We'll come to Ohio in a moment. Uh, Vice President, we have Vice President. I think Trump is going to win the election right now. Obviously, we'll have a Republican Vice President. So right now, with flipping West Virginia, which Republicans are going to do, Jim Justice is the nominee. He'll defeat whoever the Democrat is there easily. He would have probably defeated Manchin who's not running for re-election. So with a Republican vice president, Republicans have a majority in the Senate. Obviously, we would like to have a bigger majority than this. So let's keep moving and see how the rest of this uh, shakes out because we want to expand this lead as much as possible to have as much a rhino-proof majority, if you will. As far as likely states go, the only other one we're going to go to is New Mexico. I actually meant to say safe. We're going to put New Mexico as a safe state as well. I often skip over these for some reason, occasional state when I'm doing these videos as you've probably noticed if you've watched the other ones, but uh, New Mexico also going to be a likely Democrat state. So we're at Republicans 50, Democrats 43. Let's see if they can expand the majority. Republicans can. Starting over here, now that we've done Maryland and Pennsylvania, Dave McCormick keeping things surprisingly close against Bob Casey. Bob Casey, who some call an electoral juggernaut. Um, he's performing... Uh, McCormick's keeping this surprisingly close, actually. I don't think he's going to perform great. At the end of the day, I think Casey's going to uh, run ahead of Biden by several points. Um, and whether or not Trump wins the state, I think Casey is going to win it pretty handily. And I'm not prepared to say it to be a likely margin of victory, but I certainly think it's on the high side of lean and maybe even likely. Uh, we're going to say we try to have conservative guesses when I do these videos to be as realistic as possible. Usually that works kind of against us. Like I'd say, you know, instead of a lean Republican state, a tilt Republican state, cause I like to be conservative and helps keep expectations uh, reasonable that way. So we'll say Pennsylvania, kind of working the opposite this time. We're going to say Pennsylvania is a lean Democrat state. Bob Casey keeps his seat there. Now to Ohio. Ohio, we have Sherrod Brown, the incumbent running against Bernie Moreno. So Brown currently, we don't have, we have one recent poll, which is from Marist College, 1137 registered voters. I prefer likely voters in polls, but anyway, uh, we have a five-point lead for Brown. He leads by five in the aggregate. But again, we only have one recent poll that shows him up by five. However, the thing is about Brown, as you see here, he won election 2012 in a big year for you know Barack Obama's re-election. He wins it by six points. In 2018, he has a slightly bigger lead, or a slightly bigger win, 6.4 points. But the thing is, not only was 2018 a wave year for Dems, like a really big blue wave for Dems, they did really well in Senate races that year. But also, additionally, not only was it a wave year, Ohio's also trended dramatically to the right, even since 2018, and certainly since 2012, first time in, in uh, a dozen years that he's going to have to run the presidential election year. And seeing as Trump, that is Sherrod Brown, and seeing as Trump, I think, is going to win Ohio by as much as 10 points, potentially, potentially a safe margin, I'm going to put Ohio as a lean Republican state. Again, you have... Uh, who is it? Yes, Bernie Moreno. That's what I thought. I was getting confused there for a second. Bernie Moreno running against him, who some said he wasn't a strong candidate, but he performed really well in the primary. Trump and Doors strongly tied to Trump. We saw how well J.D. Vance did against Tim Ryan, another supposedly strong Democrat. So I think Moreno is going to win this election. We're going to put it by a lean margin, 2% to 4.9%. And just like that, Republicans actually now have an outright majority in the Senate, 51 to 44. Moving on to the state of Michigan. We have Mike Rogers, who is not the current uh, Rhino congressman in this Congress, Mike Rogers. He's a former congressman, which I was relieved to learn, uh, who's actually a pretty strong candidate, and he's keeping things surprisingly close. The presidential polling has been very close in Michigan, and most states, the Democrat senators are performing better than Biden in almost all states. But here, it's still true, but barely. Slot has a 1.8% lead on average over Rogers. The most recent poll shows her up by three, and you see the uh, polling pattern there, one, one, two, three. It's very close. 
Um, and it's going to be an extremely interesting race. Can, if Rogers can overperform Trump, I think he's going to need to because I don't think Trump's going to win Michigan. I think Michigan is currently uh, a toss-up state. I think Michigan and Pennsylvania are both toss-ups right now, really. That's how I had in my last video a couple weeks ago. You could argue Pennsylvania is tilt Republican. You could argue Michigan is tilt Democrat. But Michigan will call it a toss-up state. Let's say Trump loses it by one. Well, then Mike Rogers obviously needs to overperform, and he can do that. If Trump does win the state, does Trump help pull Rogers up? It just depends. Um, some people say Slotkin is a like a historical overperformer and a really big, like she's an excellent candidate for the Dems. I don't think so, that she's an excellent candidate. I think Mike Rogers is a pretty strong candidate for us. So we'll see how he does in terms of fundraising and how much money he gets from outside groups. But right now we're going to say Michigan does indeed. We're not allowing ourselves toss-ups as usual for the sake of the video. Michigan tilts Democrat. In Wisconsin, meanwhile, as I switched the wrong one again, you have at least Eric Hovde running against the incumbent Tammy Baldwin. Wisconsin is a state I expect Trump to win by around two points, one and a half to two points right now. I don't think that's going to happen for Hovde. Uh, he's running a long way behind uh, Tammy Baldwin, who is a strong incumbent there. Not a whole lot to say here. She hasn't had a lot of electoral scares in the past. Um, I don't think it's going to be particularly close in Wisconsin. I think Trump could win. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Baldwin outperform Biden by as much as eight or nine points. I think she's going to do really well there uh, compared to Biden. So I think a lot of these Senate candidates, Democrat Senate candidates, are going to overperform uh, Biden. So we're going to say Wisconsin currently leans to Tammy Baldwin, 2 to 4.9%. And the Democrats keep their Wisconsin Senate seat. And just like that, you see they have swept the Rust Belt Senate seats. In Montana, meanwhile, a very interesting state, you have John Tester taking on Tim Sheehy. The most recent poll has Tester up by two. But we don't really have that's in March. We don't really have any recent polling. And here's the deal. I think Montana is going to flip because... I think it's going to be a 20-point lead or so, a 20-point win or so for Trump. And here's the thing. It was a dozen years ago that Tester had to run in a presidential election year, and that was Obama. And he overperformed Obama, obviously. Montana didn't vote for Obama, but he wins by 3.7. In 2018, it drops to 3.1 against Matt Rosendale in what was a blue wave year for Dems. Montana in a presidential election year voting for Trump probably by 15 to 25 points. I just don't see how Tester can overcome 20 points. It'd be almost historic. So I think actually we're going to see Tim Sheehy either. It could be a tighter than expected race, but I also think he has the potential to just destroy Tester um, and where people aren't really expecting it. But right now we're going to, again, try to be conservative here. We're going to say Montana is a lean Republican state and Tim Sheehy wins uh the uh, race there, kicking out Tester, getting rid of a longtime Democrat incumbent, and she, he, as long as he doesn't get in any trouble, should have that seat probably for as long as he wants it, and it should put an end to the Democrats. Uh, last kind of a cling, they're clinging on to the precipice, trying not to be kicked off the edge of the cliff in Montana. I think this is going to finally do that and doom them for, in Montana for a long time to come. Now, Nevada, a very interesting state. Nevada, obviously, in 2022, voted for Joe Lombardo, flipped the governorship. Adam Laxalt came within 8,000 votes out of a couple, a lot, cast, over a million cast against Catherine Cortez Masto. Um, I've been pretty optimistic about Nevada, and you'll know that if you've watched some of my former videos. But uh, I think Trump is currently going to win Nevada by around three or so points. And here's the deal. Jackie Rosen can absolutely hold on to the seat. The most recent poll, the only one we have sort of recently finished in May, New York Times Siena shows a tie race. I can believe that. Sam Brown is a decent candidate. Um, Jackie Rosen, decent incumbent. No, she's not incredibly strong, but I think Brown can do it. It depends largely on how well Trump does and how much Rosen overperforms Biden. But if Trump can win this, I'll say by three and a half points or more, then I believe Sam Brown can pull us out. I think it's going to be extremely close. And honestly, for the sake of this video, since I'm not convinced Trump will get three and a half points or higher in Nevada, I think he's going to underperform his polling in Nevada, unlike almost anywhere else in the nation. I think uh, truly this video, this state is a toss-up Nevada right now. But again, since I'm not allowing myself toss-ups for the sake of the video, if you wanted my true opinion, 
Nevada's a toss-up right now, but for the sake of the video, I'm being forced to pick by myself, so we're going to say Nevada tilts Republican, 53 seats Republicans, and that leads us to our last state, and that would be the state of Arizona, where the allegedly unpopular Carrie Lake is taking on Ruben Gallego, and the reason I say allegedly is because for all the talk of Lake being super unpopular, she lost her governorship race by 50.3 to 49.7. That was a super tight race. It's not like she lost in some landslide and Republicans are just dooming themselves by picking her. With that said, she's not extremely popular either, and Gallego is performing very well now on the averages. However, you, if you take out these two outlier polls, CBS News, Noble Predictive Insights, kind of like that Nevada poll that showed Trump winning, I think, by 13 a little while back. He's not going to win by double digits in Arizona. So if you take those out, you have two points, three points, five points, three points, three points. Very realistic, I think. And again, Trump, if he can win Arizona by four and a half to five points, four to five points, Lake has a very decent shot. I think Gallego, again, going to overperform Biden. However, by how much is the question? He'd have to overperform by, perform by a lot, probably. If Trump underperforms in Arizona, he's down to like two to three points or even loses the state. Lake is probably doomed. She's going to have to ride Trump's coattails. But if Trump can get a four-point or higher win, she has a shot. Again, I don't think she has a whole lot of momentum here. Gallego seems to. He's a decent candidate for the Dems. This is another state I think you could argue is a toss-up, truly. Um, but again, we like to err on the side of being conservative here in that we're not going to try to, we're going to try not to get our hopes up too much to keep expectations reasonable. So for that reason, and I'll allow myself toss-ups, we're going to put Arizona as tilt Democrat. And so there you go. We have, uh, I think Trump is going to win the presidency, and you can watch my full video on that. It's going to pop up at the end. Uh, I think we have a Republican vice president. Should this come down to 50-50 split, which is almost guaranteed to be at least that. But I also think Republicans are going to flip Nevada, Montana, and Ohio. They really need to flip Montana and Ohio at least, or this would be just a horrible showing. If Republicans cannot come out of here with an actual majority without having to rely on the tie and the vice president breaking the vote, Republicans are pretty much doomed. And I know it said Republicans have an incredible knack for snatching uh, defeat from the jaws of victory, and it's incredibly true. It's been said for a long time, and I completely agree with it. But I do think uh, it's going to be almost impossible to mess up this Senate race or this Senate election, I should say, in these various states. Let me know what you think, though, down in the comments, who will control the U.S. House, the U.S. Senate, and the presidency, and let me know anything else. I appreciate all the comments you give me down there. I'd love to get down there and discuss it with you in the comments section. As always, thank you for watching, folks. Don't forget to subscribe. We're going to have an end card pop up here. Feel free to check out my video discussing why I think Virginia should become a split vote state, discussing kind of some of that party shift I was talking about earlier in the video in Virginia, and the presidential election video as well. Let me know what you think. 5347, Republicans are looking pretty good right now. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.